Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of This Is Leadership Podcast, your intersection between growth and leadership. And today, I'm so happy to connect with Sandra Donahue, who uh, I've met just recently, recently, maybe about a month, a month and a half ago, or maybe a little bit longer, maybe two months ago. And uh, so, I, you know, for everybody that's listening, I'd like to tell you guys a little bit about uh, Sandra, and then uh, we'll get into talking about, you know, what she does and some of the great things that are coming out. That's my dog barking there, so don't <laughs> worry about it. You know, I told her, don't bark. I'm recording a podcast episode, and, you know, like kids, what are they going to do? They're going to bark while you're doing the podcast, but it's all good. So Sandra uh, began her career with the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board as a junior kindergarten teacher at St. Gertrude. She went on to teach all grades, including special education classes and English as a second language classes at St. Therese of the Child Jesus, Metropolitan Andre, and St. Barbara. Her passion for special education continued as she served as a special education consultant for four years dealing with the entries and exits of all students with diverse learning needs for both panels. This experience led her to Father Daniel Zanin, where she served as vice principal. Sandra was appointed principal at St. Veronica, followed by St. Francis of Assisi, and finally at St. Margaret of Scotland. Sandra's love of teaching led her to bring uh, to being an instructor for the Catholic Principals Council of Ontario Principal Qualification Program, where she mentored future Catholic leaders. Sandra was a very active member of her local association, serving on her executive, president, president elect, and past president more than once. I'm really looking forward to talking about that. <laughs> She was uh, instrumental in organizing and facilitating conferences for the administrators of the board and providing professional development most recently on a system level in the co-creation of the Equity Cafe. Her passion for her work in equity, students to have voice, choice, and to feel that sense of belonging and being represented is at the heart of her work in her schools and while serving her communities. So Sandra currently serves as CPCO's 25th president, where she is committed to her to their motto, to the motto, which is serve, advocate, and lead. There you have it, guys. Sandra, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I am very excited to be here, Joel. And I listen to that and I think, who is that girl? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. It's, it's it's I find it's never easy to listen to your own bio when no. people are reading it. But you know, you've done some great things. You've got a great, you know, uh, successful career in education and mm -hmm. in leadership. And I'm one of the reasons why I wanted to to, to invite mm -hmm. you to the show. And I'm so happy you accepted. Uh, we had we had met at the uh, Codebreakers Lounge on a Friday yes. morning. And yeah. I listened to you talk a bit and I said, geez, who is this Sandra Donahue? <laughs> and I creeped you on social media right away, right then and there. I said, who is that? And I, and I said, my God, she is the president of CPCO. So I said, I got to have her on the show, at, you know, to talk to us a little bit about, you know, your journey in leadership, your mm -hmm. journey in education mm -hmm. and some of the things that you got going on because you got some exciting stuff, a book in particular that I'd like mm -hmm. to touch on a little bit later on. But listen, Sandra, uh, you know, I know I've read off your bio, but, you mm -hmm. know, did you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, you know, your family, uh, yeah. you know, some of your oh, values yeah. that, yeah, so that, you know, our of listeners course. can get to, to know you a yeah. little bit better. Yes. Well, you know, uh, thank you for that question, Joel, because uh, I, sometimes you're like, you have a professional bio, but you know, you have a personal bio too. So uh, yes, I uh, grew up in Sault Ste. Marie. So I'm a Northern Ontario girl, uh, relocated down to Southern Ontario with my once I left for university and sort of never really went back, yeah. um, always had a passion for uh, teaching. And that came very, very, very early on. Um, I uh, was a dance instructor because I did okay. dance all the way going through um, elementary school and high school. So I taught dance for many, many years from wow. the time I was like 16 and wow. continued on. And it was my part time job when I was uh, teaching when I was in university. Um, so um, always had a passion for the arts and always had a passion for um, education and teaching. And then um, I was blessed. I met my husband, uh, who also comes from Sault Ste. Marie, but we did not really? meet in Sault Ste. Marie. Interesting we met story. At the, mm -hmm. I know, right? We met at the University of Ottawa. Um, so um, from there, we both uh, relocated um, after graduation to the Toronto area. I went to Teachers College and then started my journey in education. And then I uh, had uh, two children, my son, Ryan, who just turned 24 on the 24th. 
Um, and then my daughter, Holly, who is in her fourth year of university at Western. Um, and uh, she too did a little, uh, a little dabbling in um, education because she was doing emergency instructor. Okay. And um, so just, y- you just never know where she's going to go. Uh, my son was a hockey guy and my daughter was into dance. I know, shocking, but true. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, I was both a hockey mom and a dance mom. Um, loved every minute of it. And um, yeah, so now here I am. And this year is really just an amazing year for me, because as you've seen, um, I'm serving currently as the 25th president of CPCO. Mm. Um, So um, it's a seconded position. So I am seconded to CPCO for the year. So I started in July of uh, 2023, uh, sorry, 2022, and I'll be finishing at the end of June. Um, And so it's an incredible uh, opportunity. Um, I love being part of our uh, association. And as you referenced, I've served on our local association in uh, the role of uh, president, president elect, past president a couple of times. And uh, just, yeah, just really um, strongly advocating for, you know, administrators, um, making sure that that administrator voice is considered in decision making. Um, Because, you know, I always say in every place I can, that, you know, really, at the end of the day, nothing's going to happen at a school if the administrator isn't going to make that happen. Your role is so crucial in, you know, developing those experiences experiences that are become the fabric of that school, right? Um, And so with the administrator being able to execute, you know, the balance of the policies and the procedures and the day to day operational stuff, alongside with that, you know, infusion, that passion for learning, that passion for all things, you know, to be um, accessible and available to our students, because, you know, that's what we're there for, right? We're there to make every student's experience and every staff member's experience one that is, you know, incredible and um, memorable and, you know, all of those things that you love about being in school. So um, that sort of, that piece of it, uh, I always found was just so important to me. Um, So I loved being, you know, a strong advocate at a local level. And then I just sort of uh, moved it to the the provincial level and then I was blessed last April to be elected um as the president for the 25th year that's great congratulations thank you so, so much. really important what you touched on but before I get to you mm-hmm. know you know be getting the principal on board when we're talking about initiatives and and moving mm-hmm. things forward I got to come back to the fact that you were a dance instructor and I'm just thinking <laughs> you know what yeah. I, I know you were a JK teacher and that yeah. must have served you very well when you were <laughs> I've got so much respect for 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 JK and SK teachers you know they're just great mm-hmm. people they have yeah. so much fun but that that must have served you well anyways yeah. but it's it's funny i i was you know i was listening to you talk about your a little bit more about your personal life and mm-hmm. and how you met your husband down mm-hmm. south but he came yeah. from Sault Ste. Marie and you, and you guys didn't know each other in Sault Ste. Marie is that correct no see the way yeah. I say it you gotta you know Joel here's the thing I'm one year older than him so when oh, we were in okay. high school you know you don't have time for the young ones right yeah you're yeah, just that's you're right. above that yeah <laughs> my dog <laughs> agrees you go, with you by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then you know you go off to university and all bets are off so um yeah it just so happened we we did sort of know each other but not you know we weren't in the same sort of friend group or whatever went away to university and then we ended up through a mutual friend um we ended up started hanging out and then yeah that it just went from there so yeah it's kind That's, of it's 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 unbelievable and the reason guy and if you know for the people listening the reason that i, I want to bring this up is because my wife and i uh, brigitte we have a very similar story oh really Yes. So, so like we said, uh, before we mm-hmm. started recording, like I said, yeah. before we started recording, I, w- I was born and raised in Elliott Lake. So Elliott yes. Lake, Ontario is a, it was a small, small mining town. That's right. Yeah. It's about, uh, three hours, th- mm-hmm. three hours from Sault Ste. Marie. So, and yes. your son played hockey. I played hockey. Yeah. I played competitive mm-hmm. hockey. So that's mm-hmm. what we did right in Northern Ontario. Mm-hmm. We played hockey and yeah. we did dance. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, so my wife, uh, Brigitte, uh, also stayed in Elliott Lake and we, and oh. we knew each other in high school, oh, Okay, and, but many years later, she moved to Timmins and her dad was, oh. was in the mining industry as well. Okay. But the, the funny thing, and what's similar to your story is that mm-hmm. I started my teaching career in Oshawa. 
down uh-huh. south, right? So that's where I started uh, in in, uh, in a French Catholic school board down there, uh-huh. and un- unbeknownst to me, Brigitte had moved to Scarborough, and she was working oh. there, and and I didn't know. So here we were both very close to each other. And it was actually a mutual friend that called my, my wife and said, hey, by the way, did you know that, you know, mm-hmm. Joel lives in, and, and that's how we reconnected. Can you imagine? We knew, we knew each other in high school. Yeah. And of all the people we could have met down south, here we are together again. And, you know, 21 <laughs> years later of marriage, of 20, 22 being together with two, two children, here we are today. Yeah. So I just thought I wanted to mention that because it's. Yeah, so I love story. that. So I think that's yes. really really something but now we're living parallel to, lives that's what we're doing that's what we're doing right great great minds mm-hmm. think alike so here we go mm-hmm. um yeah so coming back to the principle mm-hmm. uh you know what you had mentioned it's it's mm-hmm. so important and you're absolutely right you know when we talk about initiatives and moving things forwards in schools mm-hmm. the first of course we want to get everybody on board but i think one of the first people mm-hmm. that we need to get on board is the leader and mm-hmm. we've been doing very similar work in our board here in north bay uh, mm-hmm. since since last year you know the we 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 did our our new strategic planning and mm-hmm. uh it's it things are going so very well but one of the things that we are prior, prior, prioritizing now is you know that leadership development piece mm-hmm. within our principles and we're actively you know working on that 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 kind of uh you know that kind of initiative because yes. we recognize and I think we're seeing it more and more in school boards and school districts where we're, you know, they're realizing we need to invest in our leaders mm-hmm. and we need to develop them because if we come in and we've got this initiative and, 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 you know, we want to do these great things to at, at bottom line, improve, uh, improve student outcomes, then we mm-hmm. need to have our principals on board. And we know that if they're not, then, you know, things aren't going to move forward. So that type of work mm-hmm. is, is really important. And, you know, it's and I'm happy that you're there to be, you know, to not only be able to do it locally within your board with uh, Toronto District School Board, uh, Catholic Dis- uh, School Board, but now Definitely. you're in a position, yeah, uh, yeah. Now you're you're in a position where you can do it, you know, at at the provincial level. So, mm-hmm. you know, how how do you find it? Did you how do you find the difference? Is it like is it easier? Is it harder to be able to 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 move some of these ideas forward? You know, these important mm-hmm. ideas that you know, leadership development with our principals and taking care of our mm-hmm. principals it should be a priority in boards? So that's a, a great uh, question because it's really multifaceted. So number one, I think that um, in this role, because I'm uh, serving on a, a provincial level, I am representing kind of the collective voice yeah. of administrators and then trying to do the advocacy work Um, at all the facets of the uh, government with all of our uh, Catholic partners. So, you know, one of the things that I would say um, we do reference quite a bit is the fact that, you know, there's a necessity for uh, leadership development to be integral in the education decision-making sort of platform, Mm. because we know that in order to in in order to have you know leaders that are able to articulate this massive vision that is that is out there for education you have to also be investing in those leaders right That's so right. having really important opportunities for leadership development um that is embedded into you know the expectations of the role from the board perspective as well. So making sure that you're um you have access to, you know, mm-hmm. mentoring that's, you know, kind of really uh good mentoring uh process for our youngest uh, leaders because we know that when you first start the role, especially if you're going from vice principal to principal, um you know, that learning uh leap is massive Absolutely. right and Absolutely. everything is all of a sudden you know your decision right and it is a lot of decisions all day long uh, constant so one of the things um i was so blessed to be able to be a uh a PQP principal qualification yep. uh, uh course instructor for uh many years and i used to say to everybody at the end of the day you know if you are solid and grounded in your 
understanding of teaching and learning mm. and you're you know you're solidly uh, sitting in your philosophy of you know what it is that you want to see you can articulate your vision for your school um, then making a lot of those other decisions actually is a lot easier because you know what you believe in your heart to be the core reason for what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it. And then when people come to you and they ask you to do things that are not in that pocket, you can say no because you're very solid in it doesn't yeah. align. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. And um, and then all those other things that are, you know, sometimes seen as exhausting because they're like everybody, you know, asking you right. pieces of you all the time. You can say, you know what? No, no, this is, this is what we're going to do. I'm solid in this vision. And then you build that vision, you know, with your, uh, with your staff, with your students, with your community. And I say I include your students because let me tell you <laughs> that if you don't actually check in with your kids to ask them, you know, is this actually happening at the school, then little secret for you, but it might not be happening. Yeah, so exactly. we might think that we're doing all of these things for kids. But if the kids don't feel like you're actually doing things that are, you know, in in things that they need or want, um, then, you know, maybe it's not actually happening. So include include that student layer um, in your uh, decisions and in your kind of vision for your school, um, because trust me, they'll let you know. They'll let you know what, well, you, what you need to do. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, mm -hmm. it definitely helps you to say no, to know exactly, you know, where you're going mm -hmm. and with your school and your staff and your students. And you've got, mm -hmm. you know, the student voice, the staff voice in there. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've been a, a principal since 2006 and it, yeah. it's, it certainly didn't come Jeez. automatically that kind of mm -hmm. knowledge for me to be, mm -hmm. to come in and, and be that kind of leader, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have an idea when we first step in, I stepped into the role directly from classroom into the oh, principalship. Okay. So, you know, you've got this idea based on what you've seen done, right? Yes. So based on the principles that I've had as a teacher, mm -hmm. and then I, I build my, an idea of what it is to, to do the job. But today, uh, it's evolved. You know, I think we, mm -hmm. we can say that, you know, in the last, I'd oh, say 10 to yes. 15, 10 years, even maybe yeah. less, it's mm -hmm. evolved quite a bit. And, you know, now it's not just about being managers, right? And and we, mm -hmm. we've talked about it often before. We talk about it in books and in articles and mm -hmm. it's much more than that. But I think one of the biggest uh, challenges for, for people stepping into the role is, you know, where do I get that kind of support, that kind of mentoring, that kind of coaching mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. goes beyond, you know, just the manager style mm -hmm. types of things, right? You talked about being able to, 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 to focus, um, you know, school mission, vision, uh, objectives, and to be able to take staff and students and say, listen, this is what, these are our objectives for the next three mm -hmm. years, be mm -hmm. it uh, objectives or be it theories of action. Um, mm -hmm. And this is what we're concentrating on and being able to bring people to realize that by doing so, it'll mm -hmm. actually lower stress for us because mm -hmm. it helps us to eliminate some of the noise and and you hit the, the nail right on the head, Sandra, when it comes to being a principal, one of the toughest things to to be able to deal with it are the constant interruptions, right? You're all, you're saying that people are always wanting a piece of you and you're absolutely mm -hmm. correct. But mm -hmm. I think having that common vision and that goal and sticking to it and saying, listen, this is the lane we picked. This mm -hmm. is the lane we're going to stay in mm -hmm. is it, it doesn't, you don't, a leader doesn't know that automatically. So no. you know, being able to offer, you know, and some, some of the things that, that you're, you're putting out there and offering to the, to, to the principals so that they can develop that side and understand that side of leadership, the, the important part of developing people, developing vision, yeah. developing other leaders yeah. uh, will just end up at the end of the day, making your day easier eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. I, I, you know, it's kind of interesting. I, when I think about uh, certain things, when you were talking, I'm thinking, you know, um, one of the things that I uh, always say and, uh, layer it right in through um, the the book, uh, you know, sort of the messaging throughout our book is that ideal that like, at the end of the day, you know, you're kind of the, you're the lead learner, you're the lead yeah. modeler, you're the lead um, 
a teacher in so many ways, right? And every single person that is in your building is part of that collective. So um, when I think about, you know, just even thinking about uh, the idea that you want to have a safe, caring and inclusive school community, and we hear that language all the time, and you think, well, what does that really mean? And what mm -hmm. could that really look like, right? Mm -hmm. So I think if you, as the leader, are putting yourself out there to be a person who is um, welcoming, who is inclusive of all, making sure that you are demonstrating and modeling that ideology at all times by, um, you know, not just having your door open, because that doesn't mean anything if you That's don't right. actually right. bring anybody in. But, you know, when you're really the type of person who is saying, you know, um, I'm going to model what it is that I am hoping to see in all of my uh, teachers, in my students, in the interactions, in the interaction between my secretary and a parent, in the interaction of, you know, my custodians with the students in the hallway, uh, with my custodian to the teachers, you know, all of those places. And then you really develop those relationships as being ones that are mutually respectful of each other. Um, so understanding that every person in your building plays a role in that safe, caring, inclusive school community. So you can't have the outliers. You mm -hmm, can't have mm -hmm. the people who are saying, oh, well, I don't have to worry about that because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just in the library and or whatever. That's right. And you're like, no, actually, it does matter. And it is important. And so I need to, everybody has to have that mutual understanding of each other that every person in that building is fulfilling a crucial role in that establishment of that of that goal, right? So I one of the strategies that I've used many times is, you know, I would do office meetings with my office staff and I would say, OK, here's what we are working on mm -hmm. in our classrooms and here's how you can support the teachers in that role. And then um, what is it that's happening in the office that is making it difficult for you to do your work? Talk to me about what that looks like, and then we'll build, you know, sort of this mutual understanding. Um, so therefore, they know like, oh, okay, now I get it. I see what it is that the teachers that's are right. doing. Now I'm going to I'm going to do my best to support that. And then here is something that the teachers can do to support us, you know, in the office. And, you know, what ends up happening is you just have a bit more harmony. You have a bit more, you know, a joy. Your office becomes a place where people feel comfortable and confident that when they go there, you know, right. that they'll be greeted with, you know, um, like willingness to be listened to or heard or whatever it is. So it's just that idea that um, we're all, we all have to be understanding each other, everybody else's roles, but then essentially really understanding that when we're all working together, there's a lot of magic that can happen, Absolutely. right? And you're going to create that, that sort of space and place where people, when they walk in, they don't want to leave. They don't want to leave, Joelle. Exactly. They want to stay because they're like, I it feel good here. This feels good here. I feel like I belong here. I can see myself here. And, you know, I think that's what we want. We want every person to be like, I can see myself here. Well, that's what it is, right? So, you know, everybody wants to belong, wants to feel like they, they're part of the team. And you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. You can't, you can't not, not include, not that you're going to do it on purpose. But sometimes we won't mm -hmm. think of maybe mm -hmm. different people in the building and we should be. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody is a part of the team and has, like you said, has their role to play, an important mm -hmm. role. And for that mm -hmm. reason, I had adopted in my school something very similar. Where I would have mm -hmm. scrum meetings. So every mm -hmm. two weeks at the end of the day, uh, I would purposely have them in in the entrance of the school. Uh, it would be, mm -hmm. you know, standing up in a circle and it, it, it would be just, uh, you know, sharing positive things that we've seen other people doing in the building and, and whatnot. And we do different things nice. like that. But quick yeah. meeting, but it was in the interest of the school purposefully, but because I wanted to make sure that, for example, the the, the custodian and, and the secretary could participate as well. Yes. You know, knowing that the secretary had to be 
close yes. to the phone in case, you know, we had a student coming back on the school bus, you know, because that would yeah. happen once in a while. Mm -hmm. But it would mm -hmm. allow them to participate and feel like they're part of the team because, yes. you know, the last thing you want to do is have people feel like they're not part of it or, or being exactly. shut out or they're not heard. Yes. That's one of the worst feelings I think a human mm -hmm. being can feel is the feeling mm -hmm. of not being heard or understood. So yeah. that's, that is definitely a big part. And as a leader, mm -hmm. it's important for us to understand and to know how to create these opportunities. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. one of the pieces I was saying, that's not necessarily, you know, managing, you know, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's a leadership piece where, you know, how yes. do I, how am I able to measure where people are at on my team when it comes to mm -hmm. that, for example, that feeling of belonging Mm -hmm. And if I'm detecting that maybe there's a little bit of work to do, well, then as a leader, how am I going right. to doing that? How am I going to model it? Yeah. How am I going to go and get other uh, people yeah. on staff to, 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 you know, adopt a leadership uh, right. role and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, help me out to, to organize something mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. to have an activity where I can build that. So that's just an mm -hmm. example of, you know, of, of some of the things that we do as leaders mm -hmm. and, and in a school, cause we're, we're in school. So, uh, you know, as a building leader, that's one of the things that I'm responsible for creating those opportunities mm -hmm. for people to, to feel like they belong and to feel like they're contributing. Right. And to feel like they mm -hmm. have a voice because it takes everybody's voice and everybody's contributions to make that ecosystem, which is our school 100%. function. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's it's um it's not it's not easy. No. Right? Because no. it's very easy to get uh, you know, sort of like focused in on your role, your job, your stuff, your tasks, whatever. Um, so it does have to be consciously integrated. Oh, there's the puppy. There's um, the puppy again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, consciously integrated into your into your practice, right? But I still go back to if you are solid in what you believe about teaching and learning and your vision for a school, it will become part of just what you do very naturally because you won't see it as being outside of what it is that you're doing, but you'll see it as being integral to what it is that you are doing. It's not an add-on. It's, it's essential for everything to, you know, be successful. Um, so if you want everyone to be treated with respect and with the dignity that they deserve and for everyone to feel valued and heard and for everyone to have an opportunity to thrive and to sell and to be celebrated and to really feel like they're they're essential to that school community then you have to be the ultimate cheerleader and modeler for that all the time so you cannot forget people right you cannot be the person who dismisses a particular group of people. You have to be the one who reminds everybody that no, no, we need to check in with this particular group or this thing, or you know, um, you know, we need to we need to make sure if we're going to do this that we actually talk to our secretaries because that's going to impact them. So let's have them uh, come to the next meeting, right? So you're always doing that to remind everybody. But what ends up happening is, in the end, the amount of value that is added to everybody um, is you can't measure that because I know that um, when I went to one school and I started and did like an office meeting and, you know, sort of chit chat and I used to bring treats and I would make it into, you know, come on, we're going to sit down and we're going to, you know, we're going to do this. And I would get people to cover the phones because I wanted them to know I valued their time and, you know, did all of that it was very, very purposeful. Um, and, you know, there was a, a couple of my secretaries and they said to me, they were like, you know, this is the first time ever. And I've been in, I've been in a secretary for, you know, 22 years. And the other one was 28 at that time. Wow. And she said, I have never been invited to a meeting and asked, what do I need? Or, you know, what are my pressure points? What is happening in the office that is making it difficult for me to complete my work or to map out a plan for how we were going to tackle the work together? Wow. And, you know, we sat down and we collaborated and we said, OK, these are the things that need to get done over the next three months. How do we envision getting these things done and who do we see as being like instrumental in, you know, the, in participating in this work? And when we did that, you know what happens? 
like stuff gets done, but it gets done in a way that people feel like, yes, this is good. And when you start saying to them, you know, does this system still work for you? Mm -hmm. And then they say, oh, you know, we could tweak. I say, okay, let's tweak it. Let's improve it. Let's, you know, you're the people who are using it. You're the ones who are doing it every day. Tell me what we need to do. So you start doing that kind of stuff. And you know what? You get a lot of input and people actually are more invested in their role. And, you know, because they feel like, oh, like somebody's paying attention. Somebody cares about what I think, et cetera. So um, again, it all really does come back to, you know, what do you really essentially, what do you really truly believe and what do you want to see in your school? Um, And then when you do that, you have to model it all the time. You can't pick and choose when you're going to decide to stay, uh, you know, like that. So if, um, if you're getting input and it's, it's a little bit, maybe counterintuitive to what you usually would have done, you still have to be able to say, okay, all right, if this is the will of the group, you know, maybe we'll, we'll go there and whatever. So you have to set yourself kind of aside um, you know, because we know sometimes ego leaders, they don't really become mm. leaders. Mm-hmm. They're just more like, you know, the person who's telling everybody else what to do, but That's not right. seeing themselves as part of, you know, that sort of plan. Um, but I, I firmly believe that the leader is the person who should be fostering all the other leaders <laughs> in their building to step up. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, it, and, and it we makes have a me, lot of leaders in the building, and there are, and that's and yes. and our job. One of our jobs is to get out there and to develop those leaders so that that's they can right. come out of the shadows and actually, mm-hmm. you know, take hold and and really take mm-hmm. ownership of that leadership. Mm-hmm. And I'm listening to you talk, and there, there's a lot of ideas that come through <laughs> my mind. But the one of the main ones that that comes to mind, uh, Sandra, is you know, the coaching piece. So Mm -hmm. yes, the school leader, we have, we have a lot of responsibilities and we talked about, Mm -hmm. you know, how there's managing stuff, but then there's the the leadership bit and the people, you know, because schools are made up of people, right? Students Mm -hmm. and staff and, and we're in the people development business. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's a great question to ask the people that are listening to us right now, you know, what are you doing right now currently in your professional development in your just your development as a leader you know Mm -hmm. what are you doing to be able to develop that aspect of it are you are you uh, at ease with uh, are you comfortable with you know uh, approaching your your office staff for example like Sandra was was describing and asking those questions you know do you need some help or some guidance as to how Mm -hmm. to do that and and that's where the coaching part comes in and it's Mm -hmm. really important Sandra more and more as the years went by uh, in my experience as a, as a school administrator, as a, as a principal, uh, you know, I was, I was turning towards coaching more and more mm-hmm. and more and realizing that in my opinion, it is in fact, probably the most powerful way to develop teachers mm-hmm. is by coaching them. Right. So sometimes mm-hmm. we can be mentors and sometimes mm-hmm. we can be, I'll say therapists, but just maybe yeah. just lending an ear <laughs> to, 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 to listen to people yes. talk, but yeah. more and more, and more, the more I used the coaching approach and, mm-hmm. you know, just asking great questions and getting mm-hmm. people to really discover what's already inside of them and bringing it out has been by far the most powerful approach that I've used as a leader. And I, and, and that's what, you know, our, our principals need to, I think to, to develop is to get in there and to, to really learn what it is, what it's all about, and how mm-hmm. can I take the people that are in my building and just elevate them, help them mm-hmm. elevate, because it's not my responsibility. It, 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 that is outside of my my um, my zone of influence, right? Of of control, right? I can I can invest in people and mm-hmm. coach them, but mm-hmm. bottom line, at the end of the road, it's the person that needs to make that decision. So, how right. am I going about, and how am I building my toolbox? to be able to elevate the people that are in my building to a point where they just keep getting better and better and just wake up every Mm -hmm. morning wanting to be a better version of of themselves today than they were yesterday. So I think Mm -hmm. that that's a huge piece. That's a huge piece because the job has gotten very challenging. Really big. It's really big. (laughs) I think it's still a great, it's a great job. It's very fulfilling. Yes. But more than ever today, because of what is, what is demanded from the job Mm -hmm. that is the part that people need to develop uh Mm -hmm. and and that'll allow them to be able to not only survive (laughs) in the Mm -hmm. position but actually enjoy it you know and not work every night until nine o'clock at night and every saturday and every sunday and end up waking up in the morning and saying geez i gotta go back there again you know that's what we want 
that's what yeah. we want to avoid. So, mm -hmm. you know, for the people listening, I think it's mm -hmm. going to be really important. And if you are in a, in, in a leadership role, then everybody can be a leader. So you don't need to be a principal or a VP or no. you can, you know, it could be a classroom teacher, it could be a, uh, mm -hmm. an administrative assistant. You know, what am I doing? Ask yourself this question. What am I doing right now that's mm -hmm. helping me build my toolbox to become mm -hmm. a better leader? to become a developer of people, a mm -hmm. developer of other leaders. I think that is a really important question to ask. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when, when thinking about your role and what you're doing right now uh, with CPCO and what you've done mm -hmm. in the Dufferin Peel uh, Catholic uh, School Board, you mm -hmm. know, you guys are offering some of that, some mm -hmm. of those, uh, some of those opportunities for learning. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe you can talk a little bit about that. You know, what is available Absolutely. for CPCO yeah. for your members? Yeah. Because Absolutely. you can reach out, guys. You know, that's why CPCO is there. And we've, and I've yeah. got my, my association as well, uh, which is La DFO. Uh, yeah. And you know, I work with are, them Sandra, all the time. Yes. You yes. So, we you know, do. It's, yeah. it's important not to forget mm -hmm. that, you know, these guys are, these people are there for us to help us to get yes. better and to grow. So Here Sandra, tell us, yeah, tell us a little <laughs> bit about, you know, CPCO oh, and what they offer yes. their members. Thank you so much for that question. I love it. And I just also wanted to say, um, you, your school is full of leaders and, and, and it's just your, your, um, I think as a leader, you have to, you have to know your people. First of all, that is mm -hmm. essential. Yeah. You cannot be a person who does not understand the people that are in front of you. Just like you want your teachers to know their students, you have to know your like your teachers and your students and your families and you know all of those things. That's essential. Mm -hmm. But I would say to you that um, for myself personally, I've always been. I've always been a, a seeker of firsthand knowledge. That's what I like to call it. So I love to attend workshops, uh, seminars, um, any kind of professional development opportunity that is being offered. I'm always, you know, signing up. I want to go. I want to learn. I want to learn from other people. I want to reaffirm what I already believe. I want to be pushed in directions that, you know, shift me in different ways. That's how I fell upon Codebreaker. That's how I fell upon all of the wonderful minds and um, uh, people that are associated with that. And you know, Joelle, that in that group, it's not all just uh, principals. It's a variety of people, some uh, teachers, et cetera. People. That's right. So we're we're really tapping into that idea. So I think that that's essential. Um, I'm always a big fan of, I tell my staff what I'm doing and who I'm working with. Mm -hmm. I'm a big collaborator. I connect with other people. That's how I fell upon um, writing, uh, co-authoring a book with, uh, you know, one of my colleagues. Um, I, I would say to you that um, that's part, important. You should be always telling people how you are learning and growing and changing and doing and what are you doing as a leader? So, you know, um, I'm always telling my staff the things that I am taking the books that I am reading, the courses that I've been doing, um, the fact that I'm still involved in teaching because I was teaching the principal qualification course. So I was always using that as a tool of reflection. And I would often talk to my staff about my own experiences as a teacher so that I could integrate that into the connection or whatever. So I feel mm -hmm. like number one, you have to put it out there for, for people. You have to tell them. Um, and then number two, I think um, you you are present and you're taking advantage of what is being offered. So um, within my own board, I used to always be on any kind of um, opportunity that was afforded or offered. I would be uh, trying to be on a team. I would try to be supporting. I would run sessions. I would offer opportunities to come to my school. I would offer opportunities to lead, you know, professional development. I would do all of that kind of stuff all of the time. Um, and then with, uh, as I said, being a course instructor, I went around and I did also guest, you know, um, uh, appearances in different courses when other people were uh, doing things, I would go in and I would offer a session in, um, in other AQ courses. So I would do a lot of that kind of stuff. So that kept me going too, because what I do know is that 
for myself, I was always craving that learning experience. Mm. I always wanted to be sitting in that learning yeah. pocket, but I know that not everybody wants to sit there. So I feel like, you know, I, I try to be very passionate about my love for learning and teaching and education all the time. And then when I go around, I do a lot of permission granting, because <laughs> I'll tell you as a principal, I think what ends up happening is your teachers sometimes feel like you need to say to them, it's okay. It's okay for you to try this and it's okay for this to fail. And it's okay for us to, you know, be in this learning zone. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to be here with you. Right. And I'm going to be here to support or to guide or to help or to, or to uh, give you the resources or give you the opportunities. Um, because what ends up happening is, and we're all the same, right? You default to what you know, exactly. and you right. You you go to your comfort zone very naturally. Very, um, it's it's easy to do that. So you have to be a bit of a like a bit of a pusher, right? But a pusher that has that layer of support, and then and you got to do it by having the relationships with your people. They have to be relationships of trust, because if you just walk into a teacher's classroom and say like, okay, you know what, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Where is this? Like, that they're just going to shut down. Far. No, right. They're going to shut down, but That's so right. would you, right? So would you yeah. like, you have yeah. to think about that. So I believe like the relationship piece is essential. Um, being that model of learning and embracing the new and the unknown and going there in a way that you're like, okay, let's do this together, right? Let's, let's navigate these, these next few uh, months or years or whatever together. Um, you know, that's essential. And then um, for CPCO, uh, we have a professional leadership branch, of course, we have, um, so we offer AQ courses to develop for administrators. Um, so we have like a special education class or course for administrators. So it helps you grow in your leadership development, especially because we know that if you're in the school, you have to be leading that special education, you know, sort of whole um, um, approach to your school. So this is an opportunity for you to learn and grow. We have actually modules that we offer that are related, again, to the leader. They're all for leadership development. And um, you're able to, uh, to tap into those. And then it helps you make connections as well, because then you find other leaders that That's are right. trying to do the same thing that you're doing in your building. And so you're starting and you're formulating your professional learning network, your professional learning family, your connections, right? Which only just make you stronger. Um, because again, you're always learning and growing and changing. And, you know, and every time I meet with somebody, I think, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. <laughs> you know, I love that. <laughs> or I'm going to, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take this, yeah. or, you know, I'm going to yeah. put my own, you know, uh, spin on it or whatever it is. Um, and so the, with CPCO, what we try to do is we go around, we offer, um, uh, seminars as well from our support services, uh, people. So our people mm -hmm. that, you know, you're, you're in a situation at your school, it's a little bit problematic. You reach out, you're getting that support. So they do a lot of workshops as well on preventative things, right? So good note-taking, um, you know, you're in a situation where somebody's called you and they say they're mm -hmm. calling your lawyer, here's what you can do, right? So all those parts of the role that can be very scary, but we do it in a way so there's a lot of support. So we offer mm -hmm. lunch and learns. Um, so again, you know, I try to be present at all of those. Um, this year in the fall, I went around to all of the regional sessions and I was there listening, you know, to the people. Uh, we also offer a lot of support as well for negotiations, whether that's um, uh, local negotiations so that you can be working on your terms and mm -hmm. conditions for your contracts and supporting the people who are in that position. So I see CPCO as like a full service model, right? Like Absolutely. where you're trying to tap into everything. And then myself is just kind of, you know, this major ambassador for all things, you know, CPCO, really trying to support our members. Um, and then also... Um, because you were just like a principal last year and then you're in the role. So you still have that understanding of what it's like to be sitting behind exactly. that desk, exactly. right? So you understand the pressures, you understand the role. So when you're speaking to people, you can speak with that confidence, which is, which is great. And then also to be able to say to them, Hey, you know what? Like there is some great supports here. Here's some people that you could call. Here's some stuff that you could do. Um, or, you know, I was talking to so-and-so over here and, you know, they're trying to do the same kind of a thing. So here's another connection for you. 
because um, I, I think, you know, um, one of the things if I could say that was maybe a blessing of COVID mm -hmm. is that it, it did teach us about the importance of, um, you know, human connection, but also that importance of saying, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I don't know how to do this. Um, so, you know, who wants to work with me to come up with solutions, right? Um, who's ever been a principal who's led a school through COVID? Nobody. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Who's, who's been a, te who's been a teacher uh, who's had else. to, that, right. Like, but so you got to own that. You got to say, I don't know, but let's do it together. Let's build it. So I think out of that came wonderful collaborations and connections. And also it, again, for me, it was like, just, you know, a time for me to like, okay, where can I learn? What can I do? What can I, you know, what can I hold on to? Um, and there was so many people that were just offering so much amazing, like professional development yeah. and uh, sharing, I, like, oh my gosh, Twitter was like my lifeline for, oh, yes, you know, for, absolutely. right. Um, just connecting with people. And then I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then started, you know, this whole snowball effect. Um, but so, you know, that's kind of like a woo, really big answer to, you know, that, but it really is at the heart. I think that no matter what it is that you're going to do, if you're going to choose to be in the leadership role, I really hope that you're passionate about education because your passion is essential for other people to see and witness mm. because if they see you as not really being a lover of learning or a lover of, you know, uh, students or staff or staff development or professional right. development or whatever, it's going to be hard for you to sell it to your staff, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the person who goes up there and teaches the lesson says, okay, this stuff is really boring, but we ought to get through it. So let's just get, <laughs> right. You're like, really, exactly. I'm already done. I'm exactly. already done. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, that, that part of it for me is, um, I I've always been like huge in, you know, mm -hmm. be that model, yeah. right? Yeah, for me, it's always you about, are. you know, being a leader has to be, I have to yeah. advocate and believe in, you know, the potential yeah. of the of human beings. Yes. And basically, that's what it is. I'm there. This yeah. is why I'm, I'm, I was put on this earth, I was put on right. this earth to be able to add value and to be able to become mm -hmm. a people developer and, and develop yes. myself, uh, yeah. you know, at the same time, you said so mm. many great things and, <laughs> you know, like, I, I could I could talk for three hours, but I won't. I promise, because my dog's probably gonna bark again. She's not getting a treat after this interview. Let me tell you, no treat for you, Kiwi. Oh, but so many Kiwi things, Sandra, that you said that hit home for me. I think we 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 think uh, you know alike, mm -hmm. a lot alike, uh, you and mm -hmm. I. And um, a few things I like to touch on. And number one, mm -hmm. you know, you talked about you know making it a priority. So mm -hmm. I, I was listening to you talk and there's a lot of stuff out there that's available at different times mm -hmm. of the day. So, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm thinking, you know, I can think back to when I used to have that mentality of, I don't have time for any of this. And then I tapped into, you know, putting in the right processes, like time blocking and actually making it a priority. Mm -hmm. And I found myself, you know, being able to find time to participate in, in these, these, uh, you know, professional and personal uh, development uh, occasions. Mm -hmm. So you have mm -hmm. to make it a priority. And the other thing that I'd like to touch on is, and you mentioned it is, you know, uh, being a consumer versus being a producer. We've mm -hmm. always said that the best way to learn something is to teach it, right? So mm -hmm. what a great way, you know, if if you're looking to, to, to develop yourself, you know, first step is to get in there. It's like when you first sign up to, to Twitter, you know, yes. you're just yeah. reading, you know, you don't want to, oh, yes. you don't want to, you don't mm -hmm. want to press that tweet button because that's a, that's a, you're putting yourself out there. Right. So mm -hmm. it's good that you're absorbing and that you're consuming that professional development, but, you know, think about, and Sandra mentioned it, opportunities that you're able to, to participate in this professional development and then take it into your school Mm -hmm. And then, and then be a producer, you know, mm -hmm. and teach it and bring it to the staff. And mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to be able to, to, to learn, you know, what, what it is that you're developing and be able to practice mm -hmm. it because as a leader, I've always, and, and when I discovered, you know, leadership and what it really is and, and mm -hmm. how important it was for me to, to invest in myself first, to be able to invest into others, you know, I, I came to realize that when it comes to my learning as a leader and and being at the forefront of 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 cutting edge leadership and and all that stuff and i look at my school and i'm like geez this is just a it's a perfect environment to be able to yes. try stuff and being yeah. a leader and i'm saying this because my point is this 
being a leader means mm -hmm. not knowing everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people put a, put pressure on themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll take a school principal as an example where they think mm -hmm. that they have to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. And that asking for help is extremely difficult. And, uh, and mm -hmm. reaching out to somebody is extremely difficult. Being a leader is the opposite of that. It is mm -hmm. not knowing everything. Mm -hmm. But being able to to be that model to other people in terms of what do I do and how do I handle myself in that situation, mm -hmm. being able mm -hmm. to reach out to other people and, and to staff and to to CPC or, or your professional yes. uh, organization, it's it's to model that that mm -hmm. is part of being a leader. It's it's mm -hmm. not always having the answers. You yeah. know, it, it's not. It's about being able to have some answers sometimes, but when you don't mm -hmm. have them, what are you doing mm -hmm. to get them? What are you doing to right. reach out and getting help? What are you doing yeah. to reach out to other people to get, you know, mm -hmm. an outside looking in mm -hmm. type of, of point of view and perspective to mm -hmm. be able to bring to your team and help them grow. So that yeah. is also a big part of, of being a leader and, you know, mm -hmm. not, not only being a consumer, but to be a producer and to be mm -hmm. able to say, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. So I need to reach out <laughs> yeah. to some of my colleagues in another school yeah. or reach out yeah. to my professional association or mm -hmm. reach out to my staff and just ask them, listen, yeah. guys, I've, I have really no clue how we should go yeah. about this. So what are you guys right. doing? Yeah. That is modeling it. Right. And that mm -hmm. is leadership because you're giving and you're, and you're providing opportunities for other people to be able to step up and, and be a producer. That's right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, you're, you know, if you think about it, um, you know, I used to say to my teachers all the time, like, you're instructional leaders. That's what you are in your yeah. classroom. Yeah. Right. So you are a leader. So don't see that just because you get a lot of people, oh, you know, well, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not a leader. I'm not whatever. I'm like, no, no, you lead students every day. Right. You lead your classroom every day. Right. Just see yourself in the fact that, you know, you have a sphere of influence. Right. And then and then you have to really understand that sphere of influence because your influence is essential to understand in so many ways, because what you don't want to be is a person who is not influencing people to be their best. Right. Mm. So even with those teachers that are really stuck or really challenging, you know, um, I think of any person on my staff and I think that they have just as much potential as the person next door to them. Absolutely. Sometimes there's been many situations where people have lost their way. There's been many situations where people have been very much um, disregarded. And so I see that, you know, if there's any way that I can have an interaction with this person that makes them feel better about who they are and what they bring, and then find their gifts and help them to come back to connect to their gifts, right? Because um, it's just like that student in your classroom, like you're not going to give up on a student in your classroom, are you? Right. Are you going to say it's okay for this kid not to learn all year? Like, I don't think that you would. So you would, as a leader, you're not going to do the same thing with your staff. So you have to also be able to see the small incremental changes that happen when you engage people in a culture of learning, when you engage people in a culture of risk taking, when you engage people in a culture of we need to keep moving even if we don't want to, That's but right. we have to, because we know better, we have to do better. So we're always in that place, right? So we have to push ourselves. So I know that, you know, um, there's a lot of work right now that is hard work for us to engage in. And it's very easy to just say, I don't have the confidence to do that. I'm not really sure how to do that. So I know in my bio, it referenced that I started um, the Equity Cafe with a couple of my friends. That's and that right. really came out of that space and place as a response to administrators who were saying, uh, oh my gosh, like, I, I don't know how to approach these equity issues. I'm feeling so uncomfortable. So we said, okay, you know what? We're going to stop doing that. We're going to start a safe space and we're going to come to the table and we're going to talk about the stuff that's hard for us to talk about because we're going to build our confidence and we're going to build our competencies so that we can turn around and then we can that's lead right. in our school communities. So it was a very organic um, growing 
of a space. But again, it comes from, you know, my passion for always learning, um, you know, uh, a, a response to a need. And it was started and developed with um, my other colleagues who were also very interested in, in doing the same thing. Mm. So, um, you know, I think if you are, if you are willing to put yourself in positions of vulnerability on a regular basis, you will always be a better leader for every experience that comes your way, because, you know, you're willing to say, like you said, I actually don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to work with you to come up with a solution. Um, I'm going to make sure that I go and talk to people who I feel like I can get more information on this. And then I'm going to come back to you or I'm going to pull everybody together and let's That's problem right. solve our way through this. Right. Um, you know, just a small little thing. Like I remember when we were coming back after COVID and we had to, you know, you had to label your schools. You had posters everywhere. You just say six feet apart, you had to have directionality, <laughs> like all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like usually I go in and I'm like doing all the <laughs> zhuzhi stuff and, you know, I'm doing all that kind of stuff to get yeah. everybody ready. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to look so sterile. So, you know, we, but what we did was I said, you know, we sat down as a staff. And as a staff, we labeled our school. And as a staff, we put up the arrows. And as a staff, we came together with the directionality and we had the conversations. And it what it did was it increases every, it decreased everybody's anxiety as it related to this. And then we co-constructed, you know, how yeah. our approach was going to be. And when we did that, you could see everybody's um, sort of like fear uh, diminish. And uh, over time, we slowly, you know, work together. But I was not the leader or the knower of all things. Are you kidding me? I had never done that before in my life. So we called it out and then you worked on it together. That's just one small little baby mini example of, you know, how you can do that. But when you you have to say the things that are happening for you as well, because people do look to you, right? You are still the leader. So how you respond and how you react That's is right. so essential. That's but right. by saying stuff like, listen, my friends, I don't know how to do this either, but I absolutely will be doing this with you. So yeah. it's okay, right? It's okay for us to say we don't know or whatever, but let's mm -hmm. just do it together. And as a, you touched on something really important, um, and 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 it brought me back to how I was thinking because I remember when I when I came into the principalship, one of the first thoughts that came to my mind was, okay, how much stuff can I do for people so that they have less work, right? Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. a very noble thought, right? It's a noble yeah. thing to do, but but to your point with you know putting the stickers and the signs and how you know it, it's easy for us to to want to do the right yes. thing and thinking that it gives them less work because they're, you know, teachers are, and, and everybody else, that's right. They're already overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, when, in fact, you know, we have to stop and say, well, maybe that's not the best thing to do. Maybe we mm -hmm. need to do this together. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And build that, that, that team and, and build that culture within the school. So I thought that was really interesting when you said that, but, and you made me, you made me think of, of course, you know, you know, together we can go a lot further alone. You go a lot, you know, you can go faster, but together you can go a lot further. And, and it shout out to, uh, uh, to X factor. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I know we, we mentioned our X factor, you know, talks a lot about being stronger together. Right. Yes. So I think that's, that's really, uh, really important. So shout out to, to Matt Joseph for that one, you mm -hmm. know, because he talks about being stronger together and he's got a podcast as well that talks about that, yes. but Coming back to X Factor, Sandra, I know that yes. you're involved with them. Yes. And yeah. so let's talk a little bit about, you know, we'll take a, a couple of minutes to talk about that. Yeah. And I know you got you got a, a book in the works. So, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you can tell us about that, yes. give us a little bit of a teaser. And, yeah, for uh, sure. and you know, I'd, I'd love for people to hear about that. Thank you so much. So just to loop it all back again, I go backwards. Like I, I met Matt through Twitter, um, online, um, attending his, uh, the innovator, the lounges that were offered yeah. the leadership lounge, um, just having these connections. And, um, I would say that that was like almost like a lifeline for me sure, mm -hmm. throughout COVID. Oh my gosh. Um, anyhow, when I met with uh, Matt, 
um, after it was all over, I said to him, you know, we kind of have these connections and what COVID has taught us is that, you know, the borders don't matter anymore. It doesn't matter that you're in Boston and I'm in, in Mississauga and we're still connecting. We're connecting all the time. So we did um, a little uh, Twitter um, space with connections without borders for a while, Matt and I working together. Um, he became familiar with Melissa's work. Um, as well. Um, so we started really connecting. So when he opened up his uh, branch of um, X Factor through Codebreaker, um, I was also a Codebreaker ambassador mm -hmm. and, you know, ran Twitter chats and everything else. Um, so then, you know, we we came up with this idea to co-author this book. So Melissa and I have been uh, working on that. So our book is coming Ooh. and it's all about, um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's called Lead to Learn. Uh, so it's the idea as well that, you know, again, you're a leader, you're a learner. And when in your leading, you're learning, you're leading to get other people to learn, but also to be a learner. Because mm -hmm. if I can go back to, you know, my uh, teaching of the principal qualification course, yes. I cannot stress enough. I cannot. Anybody who is listening, please listen carefully. <laughs> um, it was work for me. Yes. But it was the best learning for me over and above the work that it ever cost me wow. because what I got out of being that instructor and that co-learner with those people in front of me I would I cannot even describe because every single weekend I would leave there inspired full of ideas and also so reflective on my practice because in there, I was so careful with what it is that I was sharing with people because I wanted, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like you're responsible for the future leaders. I don't hold that position lightly. I take that very uh, seriously. And I thought you have to, I was so careful about the messaging that I was giving to people about the way that I would be responding um, to promote this continuous growth and development, um, making sure that I made, um, you know, when I answered a question, that I was doing it in a way that was in alignment with really good leadership pedagogy and, you know, foundational um, uh, ideas, um, never uh, sort of being against the grain of who I was, but also who I was hoping, you know, them to to be to go and in, and to be future leaders. So um, through that process, you could imagine how much personal growth, you know, I was going through at the same time in that professional growth. So that idea of leading to learn of learning um, to lead all the time. You're always sitting in that pocket. Um, and I think that that's the best type of leader that we could ever be, is a person who sees ourselves as not finished, um, not perfect, but you know, incredibly willing to go along for the ride with people and put as many people on board as possible so that they feel like they belong there, that they have voice there, that they're valued, that they are welcomed there, that they're heard, that they're listened to. Um, because you know, when I look back on any of my experiences. Um, in school, you know, you you certainly don't remember the uh, the worksheet that you did. <laughs> you don't remember like none of that. No, stuff, no. Right? But you remember the people who encouraged you, the people who supported you, the people who said, hey, you know what, you're actually really good at this. Would you consider, you know, doing this or doing that or whatever? Um, the building up of other people, the developing of other people, the human experience is what education is all about. And when you immerse yourself into that space all the time, um, then I think that that just continues to uh, be part of, you know, what it is that you do. So every place I occupy, I try really hard to be a person who is um, elevating and celebrating um, the people around me, but also being very vulnerable with the people around me um, whenever it is that I can and acknowledging, you know, where it is that if I've made a mistake, if I've done something wrong, if I haven't factored this in, if I haven't done that, okay, how could I do better next time? 
So sometimes I joke and I call myself the what's next girl, because that's kind of the way I am. I'm always like, well, what's next? What's next for my learning? What's next for my growth? What's next for my, you know, whatever it is that I want to do, you know? So in the book, we try to build in a lot of really practical examples of how you can do things. We use our lived experience nothing in the book is made up. It's all like concrete. We've done it. We've tested it out. We can tell you about things that have gone well. We can tell you about things that haven't. We can tell you about um, places that we've grown ourselves and how we've changed because that's what I think leadership is all about. Um, so uh, we collaborate very, um, we collaborated throughout COVID the whole time. Um, and we established this like a men collaboration group and we supported each other and shared ideas and so on. And we speak a lot about that. And Melissa and I were um, sort of the, we started it off and it started actually with March Madness, just okay. saying um, a little <laughs> idea that we had to, you know, get people um, excited again, because yeah. it was getting tired and it was getting hard and it was getting heavy and people were feeling very isolated and alone. So we, um, we started just building big ideas to connect people, um, to celebrate learning and to continue to, um, you know, kind of, uh, make school a place where everybody wanted to be because, you know, like who wants to go to a place and kind of not feel like it's a good spot to be. Exactly. Um, and we've all been in those schools, right? We've been in schools that kind of feel heavy and kind of feel a bit like flat <laughs> or, you know, you've gone into an office and nobody's there to help you or to make you feel comfortable. And I always think, you know, those are the experiences that that we remember, but not for the right reasons. So let's make people remember us for the right reasons and for, you know, uh, for good things and, um, and we can do that. That's the beauty of being an administrator um, and a principal is because you can create those conditions and you can be that, you know, that person who makes that stuff happen. Um, you just have to really believe you can and That's then right. use the people that are there with you, right? That's right. Even the ones who maybe sometimes look like they don't want to, but sometimes, you know, you can just kind of Try there's to, different ways, different ways. We yeah, can there's do different right. ways. You have to approach everything like right. lots of different ways, right. right? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got some passions they can bring into their work. They and, really you know, do. And you talk about immersing yourself in it. You know, I'm a firm, firm believer in that. Yes. And I've always said that, you know, the feeling that leadership development and personal development gives to me. Yes. Is the feeling that I want other people to feel, <laughs> you know, yes. because oh, it's, it's so awesome. Yes. That I know that if they can just taste it, mm -hmm. that they won't turn back and it'll yeah. just be, you know, it, it'll just be great from, from mm. then on, you know, it'll just, yeah. you know, help that person a lot. So yeah. uh, lead to learn sounds like it's a lot of that stuff I was talking about. Yes. You, know, you guys are going to be talking about, you know, how do I go about to be able to develop mm -hmm. my leadership and be that people yeah. developer, you know, that, that, that leader of mm -hmm. leaders, that developer of yeah. leaders. And that's mm -hmm. the stuff that I think that, that we need uh, definitely and shout out to, you know, Matthew Joseph at X Factor. Yes. And of course, Brian Aspinall at uh, Codebreaker. Oh, yes. I'm yep. part of that as well. And yes. again, just, you know, surrounding ourselves with the right people to mm -hmm. be able to feed us and to be able to, mm -hmm. to, to push us forward. And yep. uh, so I'm really looking forward, uh, Sandra, to, to reading oh, your book, too. Lead to Learn. <laughs> what, yes. When do you think it, it, it'll be coming out? Um, we're hoping summer 2023. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I would also, you know, it's, just listening to to uh, to you throughout a couple of things too. I just wanted to also say that um, you know you say about how you want other people to feel that feeling, yeah. and I'm I'm an energy person. I'm always yeah. like I know yeah. you might have guessed. I'm I got high energy. I've got a lot of you know whatever, <laughs> but I've always been like that ever since I was very young. It's yeah. very natural and organic. And um, we've talked about this a lot on uh, Codebreaker and. Uh, leadership lounge is that you know you also will meet people who do want to uh, tone you down who do want to uh, dim your light mm -hmm. who do want to you know dismiss you because you're too this or you're too that or you're too this or that or you're too positive you're too whatever so I'm here to say to you no <laughs> <laughs> no. no, thank you. <laughs> no, it's just a straight up no. Yeah. Um, because um, it, it is important for every person to understand that 
If I have high energy and I have positive um, viewpoints and I see things as opportunities and not obstacles, that that's just as valid as the people who see things as obstacles, who see things as being negative, who see things as being not possible. So um, I'm here to tell all of the people that are in the high energy, <laughs> positive world and who do try to make a difference and do um, really love what they do and are very passionate in what they do and very much a believer in what they do to keep on going, keep believing, and don't listen to those other voices because not the people who are trying to squish you. Because I used to say, you know, people try to squish me out of me. And that's not going to happen because I'm very good with who I am. It's taken me a long time to be able to understand that I know a lot of people are not going to like who I am Mm -hmm. and that's okay, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's not why I'm doing what I do. It's not a popularity contest. It's me being able to be the best version of myself and then hopefully to be able to inspire all the other people to do that as well. And we don't have to be alike in order to do that because I can have, right? So I have tremendous respect for the people who are not in the same energy bracket as myself. Um, And I don't say that I'm there and they're over here or whatever it is, right? Like everybody is okay. That's right. So we need all of the people to be represented. Um, so I just, you know, I have to say that because it is hard. It's not easy sometimes to be the no. person who is, you know, the high energy person who's been told many times, you're too this, you're too that, yeah, you're too yeah, high, you're too, yeah. you know, you're too loud. Can you be more quiet? Yeah. Can you, and you're like, oh my Lord. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Shine your light, shine your light. And it is tough That's right. because that one person Yes. that, that is, that is that person that's negative yes. and that purposely yeah. wants to bring you down. It it makes it feel like there's 50 of them when that's there's right. actually just one. Yes. But, you know, we awesome. talked about a lot of things that we can do to make sure that we keep mm-hmm. that, our energy up. We talked about immersing ourselves in yes. our passions. We talked about yeah. being a producer. We, we talked about bringing your passions into your work. We talked about mm-hmm. prioritizing it, surrounding yourself mm-hmm. with the right people. You talked mm-hmm. about, you know, sharing what it, what it is you're doing because Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. I'm 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 a person of energy as well. And just yes. the fact that I'm sharing with my staff yes. what I'm reading, what I'm yes. doing, offering mastermind sessions, one-on-one coaching sessions, just offering that and sharing it yeah. brings me energy. So we need to make That's sure right. that our bucket is always full. We need to make sure that when that oxygen mask falls, that we put it on ourselves first. Mm-hmm. And then we can, you know, we can we can feed others and we can we can help others to develop to be the very best version of themselves as well. So yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I I, yeah. I understand hundred percent, Sandra. It's been a a, a <laughs> great conversation. I'm so happy that we met this Saturday yes, morning. I know. Um, if people wanted to get a hold of you, Sandra, mm-hmm. in which way uh, could they do that? Yeah. Well, thank you so much. So on Twitter at Sandra underscore Donahue. Um, I'm also at um, uh, like v- via email. Um, on Instagram, I'm at Sandra Donahue uh, on Instagram. And uh, I've always been, I'm I'm still trying to um, build a few things in the background uh, for myself um, because I have a couple of, I've always got ideas going, Joel. Yeah, yeah, like a website <laughs> right? or something. So I'm always, yeah, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I know, uh, but uh, so um, through um, my, I'm, I've got some stuff going that I'm trying to experiment with in the background via YouTube, just doing okay. some ideas. Um, I like to call them energy bites um because oh, nice. i've always been um a high energy person as i've mentioned that a couple of times and i think i've been asked uh i can't even tell you how many times in my lifetime but people have always said uh can you know if you could sell your energy you know you could make like a million dollars and I'm like i know i know so um just trying to come up with a couple of um little ways that i can sort of uh, share some of my um, ideas of how I choose to uh, channel my energy. Mm. 
Um, but also uh, just try to give people some bites of energy. Sometimes that's, right. that's all you need, like a little spark, a little whatever, yeah. right? Like um, because I feel like uh, sometimes it's very easy to get caught in the day-to-day uh, -day and sort of, you know, feel like everything is a chore or a challenge or a whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you kind of just have to do a little bit of a shift of the energy and then, you know, you can change things around. So um, little... Uh, thing that I used to do on Fridays, you know, when your staff is coming in, they're tired, yeah. it's Friday, yeah. it's yeah. whatever. So I used to do DJSD was in the house and I would, you know, take requests and people would phone in and <laughs> I, I would love play that. songs I love on that. the PA system. Yes, and, you know, yes, I would yes. take their, and, you know, I would do this whole bit and I'd be like, all right, you know, this one goes out for <laughs> Joelle and he did that, you know, and I would do this whole thing and oh, I just great. try to get the energy changed. And, you know, I had a lot of people who would come to me after and they'd say, you know what? Honestly, I was dragging myself to work today and I came in and there you were on the PA, like pumping us all up. And I'm telling you, it totally changed my entire day. That's so great. again, it doesn't take much sometimes to remember that, you know, you can shift your focus as well. It is possible to do so. And that, um, you know, so that energy, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can use it for good. Um, even when you don't feel like you have it yourself, go find yourself an energy giver because, you know, in it. your life, you need energy givers, uh, because we know there's a lot of energy takers, but, you know, so figure out who are the energy givers in your world mm -hmm. and go and, you know, just hang out with them and they might give you a little nibble, a little taste, yeah. and it'll get you through, right. you know, maybe a, a difficult day or whatever. Love so, it. and big part of being a leader is also being an, an energy giver, you know? So yes. I think that's great. That's yeah. great. So if anybody would like to get a hold of Sandra, mm -hmm. uh, just head on out or, or down to inspireleadership.ca in the podcast section. We'll have some show notes there for uh, Sandra's episode and uh, all her info will be there, her email address and whatnot. Yes. And just reach out. And I'm sure, uh, Sandra, yes. it'll be a pleasure for you to be able to help some people out or answer some questions. A hundred percent. Yes. That's great. So Sandra, Absolutely. listen, we're already at the end of our uh, podcast know. episode. I got <laughs> one question left for you. <gasps> yes. Yeah. So if if you had one wish for the mm -hmm. people that are listening to us today, what would that wish be? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I know it's a big question. I know. Well, you know what? I guess to be honest, I wish that they would um, be able to find um, their passion in what it is that they do um, and then be able to live it on um, a daily basis, whether that's in their work or in their home life or their personal life. But I think that it's really important for people to figure out what makes them passionate, excited, energized, um, because if you can do that, and then you, uh, you kind of feel like you're not really ever working, because that's one of the things that I Love felt it. as an educator, I have always loved being an educator. And I always tell everybody, my favorite job is the job that I'm doing while I'm doing it. And um, that I've always felt like when I go to work, I'm not really even going to work. I just feel like oh, I'm going to this place that I love to be. <laughs> and this is so awesome. And then sometimes you're like, wow, I get paid to do this. And, you know, I've been, I've been able to be on a couple of different um, opportunities and journeys in education. And for any of the educators that are out there, my one piece of advice to you, especially our young teachers and young leaders, mm -hmm. is that um, never see yourself as just one thing. Always see yourself as the potential for being anything that's in education. Um, because, you know, we get stuck sometimes and we think, oh, I'm only really good at being like, a, I can only teach grade four or I can only do this. Yes, and you're like, no, yes. no, no. You have the skill set to do any job in education. You just have to believe in yourself and put yourself in the path with others who will support you to do that. So go find your energy givers, go find your supporters, your cheerleaders, and then align yourself with them and see yourself as a person who's capable of continuous growth and learning which is what you're trying to foster in you know in all of your students so you know you can do that so find your that's passion beautiful. that's beautiful Sandra thank you very much and thank you for being the leader that you are and the well, thank you. energy giver that you are the work that you're <laughs> doing trying. yeah the work that you're doing and that you've done and that you continue doing you know with the the Dufferin Peel Catholic uh, District School Board and now with CPCO mm -hmm and all the principals that are that are members in, in that organization. So thanks for being you, and I appreciate you. 
And uh, mm-hmm. thanks for being on the podcast. It was yeah. a great episode. And uh, it's looking a great forward, pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to reading your book. So Lead to Learn, that'll be coming out hopefully where our fingers are crossed yes, for those that aren't crossed. watching on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. this summer so uh, yes. sandra uh, thanks again and you know keep bringing your light thank you so much